Greetings and salutations, my fellow math enthusiasts and students of all things mathematical. My name is Sean Spartan, and in this video, I will use Cantor's diagonal argument to show there is more than one infinity. I will present Cantor's theorem and demonstrate there is no highest infinity. In other words, there are an infinite number of them. And lastly, I will introduce the Aleph function and talk about Beth numbers and the continuum hypothesis. Okay, so let's dive right in. For most of human history, humankind has pondered the infinite. Early mathematicians and philosophers debated even the existence of infinity, but today, for the most part, we can agree it does exist. However, in 1891, a mathematician named Georg Cantor proved that not only is there more than one size of infinity, but there is also no highest infinity. To show there is more than one size of infinity, Cantor constructed a clever argument showing the size or cardinality of the real numbers r is strictly greater than the size or cardinality of the rational numbers q. I will be using this notation for cardinality for the remainder of the video. Now a property of the rational numbers is that they are countable. In other words, I can arrange them in an infinite list. Here is one such listing that starts with zero then goes through every positive and negative rational number exactly once. In this way, the set of rational numbers can be placed on a one-to-one -one correspondence with the natural numbers or counting numbers. To show that there are more real numbers than rational numbers, I will show that there are too many to be listed. In other words, the real numbers cannot be placed on a one-to-one -one correspondence with the natural numbers. We'll start by supposing that you could list every real number in a table. Now I will construct a new real number like so. The first decimal place of my new number will be one more than the first decimal place of the first number on my list. The second decimal place of my new number will be one more than the second decimal place of the second number on my infinite list, and so on and so on. This new number is different from every number on my list. This contradicts our assumption that the real numbers are listable. Therefore, there are literally more real numbers than rational numbers. Before I present Cantor's theorem, I need to introduce the notion of power set. Given a set A, I can construct the power set of A by listing all possible subsets of A. For example, if my set A consists of the letters A, B, and C, then the power set of A is the empty set, the singletons A, B, and C, the sets AB, AC, and BC, and then the entire set A itself. Notice that A has three elements, and its power set has eight elements, which is two to the third power. In fact, given any set with cardinality n, its power set will have two to the nth power elements, and will be strictly larger. Cantor's theorem shows this is true, even when n is infinite. This brings us to Cantor's theorem. Given a set A, we are going to show that the power set of A has strictly larger cardinality. Since the singletons of A are all subsets of the power set, that means A can't be larger than the power set. So suppose A and its power set are exactly the same size. Then there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the elements of A and the elements of the power set of A. This means that there exists a one-to-one -one onto function f, which we also call a bijection, that maps a to the power set of a. Now let b be the set of all x in a, such that x does not belong to its image under f. Now consider any x in a, that either x is in its image, or x is not in its image. In the first case, f of x cannot equal b because x is in f of x by assumption and x is not in b by the construction of b. In the latter case, f of x cannot equal b because x is not in its image by assumption and x is in b by the construction of b. This implies that f is not on 2, which is a contradiction. Therefore, our assumption that a and the power set of a have the same cardinality was false, and we have the main result of the theorem. As a corollary to Cantor's theorem, 2 to the n is strictly larger than n for all finite and transfinite cardinal numbers n, and there is no largest infinity. 
Since there are an infinite number of different sizes of infinity, it makes sense for us to order them from smallest onwards. This is basically what the Aleph function does. We start with Aleph Null. Aleph Null is the cardinality of a countably infinite set. It is the size of the natural numbers and the rationals. Then comes the first uncountable cardinal, Aleph 1. Then Aleph 2, Aleph 3, etc. It's important to understand that every infinite cardinal is one of the Alephs. Another set of infinite cardinals is the set of Beth numbers. We define Beth Null to be Aleph Null. In other words, Beth Null is the cardinality of a countably infinite set. It is the size of the natural numbers and the rationals. We can obtain higher Beth numbers by applying the power set operation from Cantor's theorem. Beth 1 is 2 to the Beth Null, which is the size of the power set of the natural numbers. It is also the cardinality of the real numbers. Apply the power set operation again, and we have Beth 2, which is 2 to the Beth 1. And in general, Beth n plus 1 is equal to 2 to the Beth n. A natural question to ask is, do the Aleph and Beth numbers match up? We've defined Aleph null to equal Beth null, but does Aleph 1 equal Beth 1? Another way to ask this question is, is Aleph 1 equal 2 to the Aleph null? This would mean the cardinality of the reals is Aleph 1, and there is no uncountable set smaller than the reals. This is called the continuum hypothesis, or CH, and it is one of the greatest unanswered questions in mathematics. In fact, it has been shown that the continuum hypothesis can neither be proved nor disproved using the standard ZFC set theory axioms. Assuming the continuum hypothesis is true, what about the remaining Beth numbers? Do they all match up with the Alephs? In other words, is it true that Aleph n plus 1 equals 2 to the Aleph n for every n? This would mean that for any set A, the cardinality of the power set of A is the smallest infinity greater than the cardinality of A. In other words, there are no cardinal numbers in between the Beth numbers. This is called the Generalized Continuum Hypothesis, or GCH. Like the continuum hypothesis, GCH is one of the greatest open questions in mathematics. That's it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment.